this needs a trigger warning. We it do. It's That's what we should have done. Let's give it a trigger warning before we even get into it. So today we dressed up like church people to to be on theme. And just like we in church, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my hat off. That lady was not sent from God. It's your girl Tati, back at it with another video. And in this video, we are doing another book swap with Ronald. Hey. Okay. We are going to be talking about two books that he gave us. God don't like ugly and God still don't like ugly. Uh -huh. So we can get on here and get right into it, y'all. So today we dressed up like church people to, to be on theme. And just like we in church, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my hat off. We are going to start with God don't like ugly. Oh, really? Okay. I had a thought. Because uh -huh. my rating is kind of both of them together. Okay. Because we're doing it here. You want to start off? You can give your rating first. What do you rate them together as a pair? I rated them separately because uh, they needed a separate rating. But as a pair, they had 3.5. Averaging, averaging their scores together, averaging their scores together, it's a 3.5. Period. <laughs> now, separately... Together. Separately, if you go on my Goodreads or my Storygraph, God don't like ugly gonna say five. That's my rating from the first time I read it. But this second time I read it, it's a four. And we gonna get into why right now. Uh, first of all, this book don't need to be called God don't like ugly. It needs to be called God don't bless mess. Oh, it need to be called God don't bless mess because that's what this was. This was mess. This was mess. I. Together, I give them a 3.5, definitely. This book, though, I give the, I give this book a four. I gave this book a four. Um, it took me a little minute to get into it. I don't know why. It was. It took me a little minute to get into this book. Probably because, like all the books, I don't know why I don't read the actual, like, book. Like, the summary. Didn't read the summary. So I'm just reading this book. Just, just reading. The beginning kind of had me. Because I was like, what this man... What are we talking about? Mm -hmm. What are we talking about? Because we start off with meeting Mr. Boatwright. We start off with meeting him. And I'm like, mm, okay. But only for like two seconds. And then we go to her life in um, in Florida. So to give y'all a little backstory of this book and some of the okay. characters, I guess we get into it. Well, I was about to say Mary, Mary Monroe. So this is Annette Good. This is what she looks like. She's a plus size, dark skinned little girl. Her mom, what's her mom name? Because I didn't forget. Goosey May. Goosey May. Her mom is Goosey May. They are from Florida. And they moved to Ohio, to Richland, Ohio, with this lady named Scary Mary, who um, we find out do some shady dealings that we could talk about later. And um, she ends up growing up there with, her mom, because her dad ends up leaving, it's her mom, her, and this man named Mr. Boatwright. They all live in the house together. And then we meet these other two characters who turn out to be her best friends, which are, well, Rhonda is her best friend. And then there's Pee Wee, which is this scrawny little boy who got all the gossip at the town. Okay, just to give y'all a little backstory. Okay, <laughs> I just want to start off by saying, I read this book previously before we read it for this. So I knew what was going to happen. And mm -hmm. so um, that's why I kept saying, I, I warned Tati so many times. I'm like, this storyline get dark. It gets dark quick. Go in prepared. And then when I was actually reading, I was like, oh, wait, this got a little dark too quick. And then I didn't think about it. I was like, I hope Tati didn't have no experience like this because I don't want to be traumatizing people. Child, listen, let me say that. This needs a trigger warning. We It do. It's that's what we should have done. Let's give it a trigger warning before we even get into it. This book, this book has it has um it has themes of of molestation of abuse towards a child. It has themes of murder, and um what's some other themes? Because this book, I mean, these are all themes that kind of come up, but I think the abuse is yeah, yeah. The abuse is explicit. So keep that in mind while you're reading this book. I actually, which they came further down the line, but I did have to skip over some parts because child, she's a good writer. I will say that she's a good writer. So like, just like you feel and you, she's able to explain in great details, like her childhood and different things, the same amount of detail and feelings that you experience when you're reading the regular parts, you're going to feel that or even more 
when you're reading the other parts. So yeah, keep that in mind. When I was reading this, I was traumatized and I didn't even have no experience like that growing up. We might get into some things, might get into some details about the book. So if you have not read the book, you may or may not want to continue. Like, but click off because we yeah, talked about the book. Yeah, this is a discussion. So let's kind of set the give this um announcement right now. This is a discussion about the book. So like, of course, it's like a review and things like that. But you know how some reviews and some people, they're not going to give you spoilers. They're not going to tell you what happened in the book. We're, we're, we're digesting this. We're going through the actual pieces of the book. So if you're not into that, if you just came to get a little sprinkle of what the book is about, another video. Go read, <laughs> like, go read the summary. My first note says, Gussie May is pissing me off already by bringing Mr. Boatwright around. Now, um, like I said, I already read this book before, so I knew what was going to happen. But the first time I read this book, I knew what was going to happen to Annette. I knew the minute she said she was not comfortable around that man. So we started there. And for me, I was like, oh, okay, she got a bad feeling. What's about to be going on? Especially when her mom was like, you better mind everything he says. And she couldn't put it like she couldn't put it into words and that's how I feel like you are in that situation you can't put it into words even if you ever I don't think you've necessarily because you hadn't been abused at that point you don't necessarily have to be abused but it's certain people especially if you've never been abused where it's like I don't know what's telling me no about you but something saying no she kind of got me relaxed once we went to the childhood because it's like okay we met this man cool whatever she don't like him but let's talk about like growing up and before we got to him I knew it was gonna be trouble I knew it was going to be trouble. I thought the hurricane was going to, I thought the hurricane was going to kill her daddy. If you want me to be honest, I thought the hurricane, was it hurricane? It was a hurricane. Oh, I thought it was going to kill her daddy, Easy. but it was not. He suffered, they suffered worse. That man ran off with a white woman. It's this common thing of like, I'm pro-black, I'm pro-black, I'm pro-black until it's time. And then having this desire to be with white women mm -hmm. that this book kind of touched on because i didn't know what and i had hope i'm like oh he's that her daddy about to die while i was reading this book that's all i was thinking i was trying to keep a positive mindset of like something had to have happened for him to have to leave with that woman it's, i don't know the whole hurricane scene it kind of reminded me of uh what's the other book their eyes were watching god have you read that book Mm -mm. all right because that's gonna be your next book but um okay. <laughs> i'm just letting you know now but uh it kind of reminded me of a scene from that book because they have a, a a similar situation so when i was reading it i'm like so is this like the part where like everything just goes haywire and sure enough it was everything went haywire and when he left with uh that white lady i was like so you pro-black, I'm black and I'm proud this, but you running off with a white lady and you supposed to, I feel like it was kind of like a, um, I feel like it was a power thing, especially because if you think about it, Gussie May herself is a light-skinned woman. She's not that dark. She's not. So I was thinking like, this man kind of like him, you know, women of a certain complexion. But with him, as fast as he came, it was as fast as he left. And we ain't never heard from Frank again. We left ain't hear from Frank again. He um, left them out. He had them out there eating out of trash cans, stealing out of people's garden. He left them down. He left them down bad. It was hard for them. It was so hard that this lady, this is where we get to scary Mary. Ooh, that miracle service. She um she was their savior. She was there, she was a godsend. <laughs> In a word, you see that you see the that, quotation. That lady was not sent from God. That miracle service was a darn sham. They sit up there talking about some, oh, we there to get healing, we there to get miracles. But the only person that had a miracle was the person that was supposed to have a miracle, which was the person that set it up with the pastor to cough up the cancer that looked like raw liver, to cough up that little cancer so it looked like he got healed to make the pastor look legitimate. Mm. first of all if you if you was a real pastor and you really doing healing and miracles in the name of jesus you don't gotta fake it you don't gotta make it look fake to get people to believe you you a sham and that's why 
Annette feel like her meeting Scary Mary was a miracle because it was a miracle service, but that was a terrible miracle in my eyes. But we're gonna keep going. Okay. God worked through it. Let me not say that. I I didn't know how to feel about Scary Mary. Um, because I knew it was gonna be something off. When she said the miracle came, I don't know why I wouldn't even pay attention to all, all the other parts, but when she was like the miracle came through this woman named Scary Mary, I was like, mm, I'm hearing about her. She a little bit shady. The husband died, she go to jail. A little bit shady. And I knew for sure, for sure, I knew that Annette's reservations, she had a reason to be like that. This is what made me be like, she's still in my pipe dream. I got this big house, my husband gave me this money, my husband gave me this money, my husband gave me this money. Then you go to prison. You go to jail. Mm -hmm. You go to jail for, for, for running a rink out your house. It, so it was, you know that's a lie. It was a scam artist. Yeah, so now you coming down talking about, mm, we gonna, we gonna do this, we gonna do that. No, we're not. And when they got down there, I felt so bad because I already knew what was going on. Like, from how she was describing it, I already knew what was going on. Let me say this too. It's this idea that they brought up of like moving from Florida, like her mama thinking she better than everybody else because she- Because she done moved north. Honestly. I'm going to say this. Good see, mate, you moved to Ohio and you think you're so much better, but think about what you're doing while you're cleaning them houses. What, what are you doing? What are you really doing? What are you really there for? Mm -hmm. You dare to cook, clean, and basically do some other services that we're going to get into in a little bit. But. So we go from there to Boatwright moving in. And it was good until it wasn't. Which is exactly, I like how she 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 was like, ah, something I didn't like about him. Then we meet him again, but it's like, oh, he's doing all these things. Because that's what people do when they're like grooming kids. Doing all these, these great things. And that's like... I don't remember what page it was on. I don't remember none of that. I just remember I skipped the next probably four pages. Like from her being seven and him going into her room, I couldn't tell you nothing that happened during that part because it, I skipped. It, what that paragraph you read that led into that's all that happened. I mean, from that moment, the girl already had a hard life, but that just took, I think, a really big toll. And the good thing that like changed it was them moving into another house that this judge had and I think the judge not the not just the judge when you read the book you'll notice a switch you'll notice a switch from when they lived in Florida to when they moved to Ohio when they lived in Florida she was always with her mom she was on the porch she was somewhere in the kitchen watching her mom cook and clean for these women in their houses how they had it good you notice that shift from that to when they move to Ohio is when we in there in the train station, we see her mom's first male employer. You never hear about her mom having a male employer until that moment. And you'll notice that in while they're in Richland, all you he, like all of her employers for the most part are men. And you notice the difference of when she used to be like all through the house playing and stuff or talking to the people. Now she got to just sleep in the basement. That's it. And so you see that difference and she, you know, we find out why she walking to her mama. We find out what's going on, but she ends up looking up and getting with this judge and being able to move to his house to a nice part of the neighborhood where Scary Mary is. I think at this point we can get into the type of person that Scary Mary is. You you could you can introduce her if you want to because we, we Mary. Talk about her. yeah. Scary Mary is a madam, and she got. I think she had like five women working for her. I do not remember. She had a few know. women, but she had a few um, women. But Gussie May was um one of her fill-in women when one of her girls could not work. She would call Gussie May to come fill in for that girl because Gussie May owed her a few favors from when they was living down in Florida. And uh, you can't tell me that Gussie May wasn't also engaging in the business when she was down in Florida. You can't convince me. So I think she knew how scary who Scary Mary was. But I don't think she was engaging in it until, or fully in it until she got to Florida. I mean, until she got to Richland. Because that's when she got the most desperate. Because when they were in, in Florida, I don't feel like Scary Mary was like down on her look. I feel like that's another reason why she was able to convince Gussie Mae to go up there. Because she was like, I'm living this good life. It's so many things to do up here. She was probably like, oh, but girl. 
you know, you know, it's better up here. You know, the black people up here, they so we so much better off. We live in a better life than we was down south, which probably was true. They probably did have a little bit, a little bit more freedoms, a little, a little bit more freedoms than black people did down south. But I feel like that's what she was able to bank on, the fact that life was a little bit better for black people up north. From there, it's not much going on from them moving into the house except them her building up a routine. Her building up a routine with um with Bo Wright. So this man at this point had been doing it for years. We get to what she's like 13. Yeah. 13 at this point. So he had been doing it for years. So by the time she's 13, she knows him like the back of her hand. She she's learned to leverage. It sounds so terrible because it is terrible. She's learned how to leverage this bad experience. She would like learn little tricks to get money out of him. She would tell him her period lasted way longer because, oh, God forbid, touching a woman when she's on her period. I could touch a seven year old, but you on your period? No, ma'am. But at this point, you see um, the inside of an abuser's head because it's moments where she's like, he sounds like a whining child, or he's like, why are you still being mean to me? In his head, they really are lovers. In this man's head, they really are lovers. It's like, it's not, oh yeah, I'm doing, she's like, you know what you're doing is wrong to me. It's this one part, and I don't remember if it's like, after she becomes friends or before, but she's like, because she would mention to him, this is wrong, I don't want to do this, you know, I don't like this, yada, yada, yada. And so one time she mentioned like, you're wrong. You're out of line for this. And he's like, how come after all these years, you're still so mean to me? I don't like you. You're not my boyfriend. You're not my man. And the sick thing is this man had every way, y'all. This man figured out every way to, to just tear this girl down. Because you got to think about it. She is a child. Her mom's like, you better listen to this man. She's going to listen to him. And I didn't realize how much of a hole, like, when you don't realize in the book how much of a hold that this man has on everybody around him. Because at this point in the book, all we're hearing is that this man is terrible. We just only know him from Annette's lens. And you hear every now and again, oh, he's a good man. Oh, you better listen to him. But you don't know the type of person that everybody thinks that he is, right? Because he just gambling. He just doing everything wrong. And of course, we're all, nobody's without sin, right? Nobody's without sin, especially in this circle. But then they had to do what they had to do. So nobody's without sin. But um, we'll find out later that it's almost like they hold him to like a different standard. But yeah, so he he just, you know, they think he's just drinking a little cussing and stuff like that. They think it's nothing major that he's doing. Honestly, they think it's so gracious for him to be spending so much time with the little girl and all that type of stuff. When they move into this big house, they meet Pee Wee. So Pee Wee is this, uh, what they call him, sweet? They call him funny. Pee Wee is supposedly funny. So he likes to gossip. He's a skinny little boy. He likes to gossip around town, all that type of stuff. And he follows Annette around everywhere, talking to her, trying to get her attention. That's all Pee Wee want to do. He just, he, he, he the boy who hang out with all the adults, tell all the gossip and things like that. Um, and so they become, they don't become friends. They just, he just follow her around like a shadow, but she lets him come around. Cause he talk about, he gives the mess. Then Rhonda moves in. Ooh, okay. Rhoda, Rhoda, Rhoda and her brother, Jock. Those are some of my favorite characters. I, I loved Rhoda and Jock cause they came in this book and they turned it upside down. And I was like, they were needed. They were needed in this storyline. Yeah. They were needed in the storyline because when you just sitting there reading, reading, reading through Annette and her trauma and what she got to put up with that. When you read it through what she got put up with and then she meet Rhoda and, and Rhoda come in and, and she just, Rhoda just turned it out. But we gonna, we gonna talk about it. When she, before Rhoda came on the scene, but once she came on the scene, you realize how freaking ugly these people are like yeah. it's one thing like but like a disgusting heart a disgusting mm -hmm. heart like they talking so much trash about these about these people so much trash you they know talk so much stuff about this little 13 year old girl Rhoda and Annette are 13 when they meet they're 13 year olds they're not doing nothing well 
all they really should be doing is going to school and going home and being in whatever little after school activities that they supposed to be doing. They 13. They can't help how they look. And that's what they are trying to do. Now, Rhoda, her description, she's just as chocolate because um, Annette is chocolate. Both of them are just as chocolate as each other. So um, Annette is plus size and Rhoda is skinny. And she has long hair. She looks like a little Barbie doll. She got long hair down her back. Um, and she, and she them, comes um, from this rich family. She got them green eyes because she's a... Uh... Yeah, because she's, she's a quarter white. she's a quarter white yeah she's a quarter white her dad is half her dad is half white now we're about to get into the good part y'all we didn't got to uh rhoda and her family and we get into the good part because we've been we've been playing around a little bit but no it's time it's time to really get into the nitty-gritty of this there's two parts in this book that get me a little up there and that's this is one of them so rhoda comes from a family um, what's her family name? Nelson. The Nelsons yeah. are a, a rich family, whatever. I don't know how they introduced it. Her dad is a is half white. His mom is white. And so he's taking care of it's her, her brother Jock, her mom, her uncle Johnny, who is a fully white man, and her grandma. They're all there. Uncle Johnny, crazy. Jock, crazy junior. <laughs> he's in oh. gangs and stuff like that. Her dad is an undertaker. Um, and her mom, she's just, you know. Her mom is a bat. Yeah, um, her grandma and, is yeah. white and crazy. She's loony, especially at this point, because she has like dementia or something. So it's it's eating away at her brain. Her brain. So when she sees black people, her son is black and his kids are black, she be going off the wall sometimes. Him and his wife had three kids. So there's Jock, we talked about, a little crazy. And then there's Rhonda, who is real crazy. <laughs> and, and then, then her older brother, David. Older brother is David. David died when Rhonda was five. He got shot by the police officers and he died in her arms. Some little white girl got pregnant, said it was his baby. No, no, no. It wasn't the white girl. It was the black officer who did it. So it was a black girl. It was a little black girl who got pregnant, said it was her brother's. Couldn't have been her brother's because he had a disorder. He had some medical issues. So he could not have babies. But she said it was his, wanted him to get married. They got into it. The officer came and shot him dead. So she's missing the description of a robbery. But the we only, all know what it really The was. only description he fit was the uh, the boy that didn't want to marry your daughter. So that's why you went over there, call yourself exact and revenge. But we gonna get to him. He dies in Rhonda's arms, and she's been having a mental issue since then. So everybody's scared of her because they're like, "This baby, we don't know what she's gonna do." And Rhonda is a little bit like she don't play. She don't play. No. When we meet her. She's all prim and proper, but when they first, so when we meet her, they become friends. They didn't become friends straight away. It was something weird that happened they that met. they don't really talk about, but they talk about. Um, Annette just is, she's in awe at Rhonda, right? And Rhoda, I keep calling her Rhonda. Rhoda, she's in awe with her, and she thinks she's just the most beautiful thing, and she's so, she thinks she has a crush on her, honestly. Mm -hmm. And so she kind of follows her from a distance. But the first time they actually really just sit and talk, Rhoda asks her, can she watch her eat? And she never saw somebody love food as much as her, which I, it was a little weird for me for her to ask Annette that. It was a little weird. Um, but she so, was fascinated with it. So two things. The first thing is we learned that Miss, that, oh my, Boat Wright was supposed to live with uh, the Nelsons at first. Mm -hmm. but because Uncle Johnny came, but Wright couldn't live with them. So that's how he got ended up with Annette and her mama. And I'm going to get, I'm going to, I'm going to get on that later. But the second thing is Rhoda and Annette's uh, friendship. It reminded me of Sula and Nell. I think that's what really drew me to their friendship dynamic was the fact that it seemed so much like Sula and Nell. I was like, this Sula all over again. No, literally. Cause they when they first have class together, this is when they first really sit down and start being friends. Um, some girl was like trying to bully Annette, and she ended up putting like a booger or something on a backpack that she thought was Annette's, but really it was Rhoda's. Child, mm -hmm. Rhoda came oh, running at that. <laughs> she Baby. took she took that girl head and dunked it in the um in an out of order toilet, and I want to know. If the toilet out of order, how it did it flush? It held it for a minute. Yeah, how did it flush? 
flushing her. She basically waterboarded her. And she was like, if, I, if, if you ever touch my stuff again, I'm going to kill you. And everybody in that room knew she was not playing. And that girl tried to act tough. But we all know. She was like, is that, was is that a threat, Nelson? Oh, no, it's not a threat. It's a promise. And Annette gets a little scared by this. But then she like, and whatever. So they become friends. Bo Wright hates it. Hates it. She starts going over his house, going over their house. And at this point, child. Like a typical abuser, we he hates that. it. We're going to get into that. So at this point, he had already stopped some of her plans. Like she had planned to um Wee had convinced them to go let her go to a field and like pick peas or something like that mm -hmm. was it pea? it to pick some beans so had to, some beans and so when she left some boy like tried to smack on her butt Bo right oh she being fast she can't go no more because he thinking that she trying to be with some other boy so she her age go. a boy her <laughs> age let's 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 okay. let's let's throw that in there a boy her age age approach and she gets on his face because she's like, bro, it's a boy my age, first of all. And you know you're not supposed she be getting on him. Like, you know you're not supposed to be doing this. So why is you even doing this? You need to stop. Th then, like, she would leave if she was, um, was it when she was with Rosa? I think it was when she would go to the library, stay at the library yeah, all the she time. she would go to the library and study. And her, and her mom's like, oh, Boat Wright said you've been running the streets. So you need to come home as soon as school is out and you need to stop leaving for school so early. Because he said you run the streets. When in reality, she's off. trying to get him abusing her. So with Rhoda, he puts up this whole thing of like going to Rhoda's house. Well, you know her brother Jock is there and he's so fast and da da da. Boy, he's so basically he's kind of jealous of Jock, um, which is so annoying. So that's something that happens of like him not wanting her to go over there, but she's going over there. They end up having good times over there talking. But Bo Wright is talking about everybody like a dog. And so it gets to a point to where um, Ro Rhoda is having a conversation with Annette. It's two things that I, I don't think this happened first. I know Annette told Rhoda something that had Rhoda like, oh, I, oh, she told Rhoda that Boat Wright didn't like her. And she's like, why? I don't know that man. Yeah. And so basically she's like, well, I want to go look this man in the face. Introduce me to him. And he ugly. That's what she but he really was but they were talking about like ugly oh and that's a point in this book where we talk about it um but of course Annette thinks she's ugly and she's like her mom says something about like which referring to the title but she's like her mom's like God don't like ugly and she was like well I'm ugly do God not like me and her mom's like you're not ugly you're not ugly yada, yada, yada. but Annette um Rhoda is the first person to make her really not feel like she's ugly she's like you got beautiful skin like me and your skin is clear I gotta wear makeup and do facials like really making her feel good she's like Jock said you was cute Jock her big brother Jock said you was cute girl like give her a little bit confidence <laughs> and have this um like this sense of foreshadowing that maybe her and Jock gonna be a thing because you know, we gonna talk TV. about that Get with the brother, get with the brothers of the We're best. Talk about it. She finally tells Rhoda, and Rhoda is like, "Come on, like how she said, let's go." And so she like, "This the man, and this what he be doing. You have sex with him, and Rhoda's and Annette is like, I 'I don't have sex with him. He, I, he do what me. he do, and I lay there. Eventually, Rhoda actually comes over with her mom. With um, they they let Rhoda come over to her house, so and that this, they can meet her. This. This scene, Boat Wright and Goosey May show they behind. First of all, why the first thing, why the first thing when Rhoda walk in the house is that your real hair? Hi, hello, how you doing? We don't do that. We don't do that no more. Mm -hmm. We don't. We don't is do that, that no more. Real? Oh, this jacket is this real leather? To even tell a child, oh, it look like a wig. And they have dinner. Rhoda's helping and staying and talking. She's, she, you know, she being all kind and nice. Being nice, she respectful, likes. like a child, like a 13-year-old should when she go over somebody's house. She's helping them out. And then when she leaves, Bo Wright makes a comment and is like, you seen her swinging her hips in here? And Goosey Mae's like, yeah, begging to be right. And Annette is like, what you doing looking at her hips? Because she's 13. What are you doing looking at her hips? What you doing looking at? Oh, why are you? What, what you saying, girl? Oh, nothing. And then this comment of like, 
girls begging to be raped comes up and they even talk about it hurt it this comes up several her. times um Annette was not nah, Annette Rosie was talking about some stuff that happened when she was in Alabama in the south and she was like yeah this girl got raped and the woman beat her and was like don't try to come near my like women would be like don't try to come near my husband and one of the girls who got raped ended up killing herself because she was like how bad this world treats black women and then her Annette's mom reinforcing this this idea that like girls are asking for like oh she just begging to be raped she's begging to be raped and when other things happen in the story she's bringing up Bo right and he's so great and he's so this and that it, it, it's the juxtaposition of this this is going this little thing i'm telling y'all is going to be a big thing later down the road because think about and this is something that people do not think about you don't know who in your life has been abused Mm -hmm. you do not know 90 i will tell you this and i'm not playing 90 percent of women of all the women you've met have probably been abused mm -hmm. 90 sexually assaulted. 90 percent of all the, whether they tell you they've been sexually assaulted or not nine seven out of ten they have been sexually assaulted and when you make comments like this especially around a 13 year old child it's something that makes a woman like women who are in their, like women like even me, it makes people uncomfortable. So what do you think as a 13-year-old child hearing your mama say that a girl is begging to ask for it? She's begging to be raped. What do you think that means for her who is actually being raped? She's like, oh, I sure can't come to you now because they don't beat me. And he was even, Bo Wright was like, earlier down the line, she was like, I'm going to tell mom. And she was like, and what's she going to do? I got to tell her, you think they won't believe that you came on to me for a Twinkie? It wasn't a real, it wasn't really tweaky, but like a piece of candy or something he said, you think they they will believe you or me if I say you came on to me for a piece of candy. And y'all wonder why girls stay quiet. Y'all wonder why girls don't talk to y'all, why they don't tell y'all stuff. And it's because of stuff like this. And don't say that this is a book. Because it's not a book, it's real life. Art imitates life. Art imitates life. This is real life. This is real life. And this is why you got to be careful by what you say to people. With that whole thing, that was the start of like, and y'all see how like up there I'm getting is because stuff is coming together to where I could really just get in there how I wanted to. I didn't want to get too ahead of myself, but that's that really listen. And it made Rhoda mad too, because Rhoda is like, what you want to do? I was about to go to when they were 17. But before we get to that part, we could talk about whatever you have. Do you have something next around? Because I was going to talk about the two new people that came up. Um, I I have this note here. This is right after she tells Rhoda about um about what Bo Wright's doing to her. I have this note. It says, "If she were smart, Annette, sweetie, you were six and left to the whims of a strange man by an incompetent mother and a reverend." And it's like you, as a six year old, as a seven year old, you really don't have those. You you can't even as a thirteen year old, you can't form those thoughts to really sit back because you don't know about abuses you don't know these terms you don't know a lot of women who were molested or even some women who are groomed who are like 16 talking to 21 year olds they don't know it's wrong until you turn 21 you turn 22 25 you be like 16 you're a weirdo but at 16 you don't have anything to compare it to any any thing to gauge in your mind so she really was carrying that burden of like something that wasn't even her fault then I have uh, just one more thing here. In another reality, Jock and the net could have worked. I wanted oh, I them. Wanted I wanted them together because I, I really like Jock. Even though Jock was a little um, rough around the edges, I don't know. I just liked him. I liked him with. I thought his crush on the net was cute. Number one, because he's more age appropriate to be with her than this old man. What was he like? I don't know. I want to say he was like 15, 16. Yeah, he was like 15 and 16. So and he's I, definitely more age appropriate to be with Annette than this old child molester was. Yes, let's get into the new people. There is Florence, who is a nanny, basically to Mott, who is um Scary Scary Mary's daughter. Daughter who is mentally ill. She has the brain of a three-year-old, even though she's older than all the other little girls in this book. So she gets Florence, who is half blind, to take care of her. And there's Otis. Otis actually comes first. Otis is this cute little boy from um, Jamaica that Rhoda sees and she's like, I'm a Miriam, period. Point blank. That's she my said, husband. That's, she said, that's mine. That's it. Everybody else can go home. So they all know about sex now. They all have, have had their conversations about sex. 
And we get to a point in the book where um, there's like a pregnancy scare. And yeah, Annette it, has a pregnancy scare. Annette no, it wasn't a even a pregnancy scare. Annette was pregnant. And she's, so they talk to Jock and they're like, Jock, what do you do if a girl, if you got, if a girl was pregnant, she didn't want to have a baby. And they have this conversation with him, big brother to little brother. He's like, who? Who's pregnant? He's like, who, and, who got you pregnant, Rhoda? Yeah, he was, I, he was like, I, I told him I was going to kill him. If he put his hands on you, she's like, no, not, not him. And so he tells her basically drink a bottle of whiskey, gets a hot tub, the baby will be gone. And the baby was gone. And she was in the hospital. <laughs> yeah, she was in the hospital for alcohol poisoning. And she had to lie. Uh-huh. Now, it didn't go right, baby. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. And this is the yeah. scene. This is the scene where I had my first rant. There go you ahead, go. Continue. She had to lie and say that the baby wasn't his. And she was like, oh, I don't know. She was like, oh, God, her mama, oh, Lord, she don't know who the baby father is. Talking all this stuff. And I raised you right. And all this stuff. And poor little boy. So now she can't even leave the house. She cannot even leave the house because he's like, she's going to be going after all these little fast boys. And then he tries to say hey, the baby wasn't his. He's like, oh, I'm too old for the baby to be mine. Just like you too old to be, so you so you too old to be having babies, but you're not too old to be having sex with this baby. Uh-huh. And he's like, oh, the baby's jocks. I don't know why he's so jealous of this little boy. He's so jealous of this little boy. I'm going to tell you why he's jealous. He's jealous because jock is age appropriate for Annette. That's why he jealous, but that's not who I'm ranting about. I am about to go on a rant about this. He made good. Annette's mother. Page page 171 of God Don't Like Ugly. Annette is laid up in the hospital, then just um, miscarried her baby. And Gussie may have the nerve to be standing over that girl. Oh, whose baby is it? I thought you was a good girl. And this lady have the nerve to come out her mouth after calling her daughter a bride of Satan, have the nerve to come out her mouth and say, where did I go wrong? Gussie May, let me tell you where you went wrong. Let me tell you where you went wrong, Gussie May. You went wrong. The first place you went wrong was when you were sitting up there in your, uh, your employer's house with your daughter in the room next door, sitting there, you was providing adult services to your employer while your daughter's in the next room. That's where you went wrong in the first place. Because why do you have your daughter in a situation where she not supposed to be seeing stuff like that? That's where you started off going wrong. Actually, no, you went wrong before that. You went wrong before that when you tried to erase that girl daddy away from her life and tried to act like her daddy didn't exist. And you were sitting up there talking about some, oh, your daddy, you don't know who your daddy is. Your daddy left us. He ain't going good. That's where you really went wrong. But where you first went wrong was when you had your daughter around your employer while you was providing adult services to him. Then you went wrong secondly when you brought this man into this home that you do not why are you bringing a strange man into your home are you stupid you are a complete and idiotic the most idiotic person i've ever read in my life even worse than darn jack john from falcon 7 and that man was dumb but uh Hold on, because I because I'm getting mad because you brought this man into this home and you don't know this man. And first of all, let, I'm gonna go off on that reverend too, because you are a reverend. Why are you putting a man, a strange man, in a home with a single mother and a young girl? What is wrong with you? Put this man with another single man who is able to take care of this man with his darn one leg, walking around, hobbling around on a darn one leg. What man gonna take care of him though? This he may, this he may, you went, because I'm not on him yet. This he may, you went wrong. You went wrong when you brought this man in this house and you didn't know nothing about this man talking about some, oh, we need him in here because he going to help pay the bills. It's, and then, and then when you really went wrong is you didn't know nothing about nothing that was going on under your, ho- under your roof. That's where you really went wrong. How do you not know what's going on in your own house? This he may, the house that you, well, you don't pay the bills. Judge Lawson is paying the bills. You just paying the day-to-day stuff. How you don't know what's going on in your own home? How you don't know that it is man for a whole decade how you do not know for a whole decade that this man is abusing your daughter what you got to say what you got to say because if i keep going we're gonna be here all day it's double-sided i'm gonna start with the the benefit of the doubt and then i'm gonna go to the other one. Mm. the benefit of the doubt part is that as a parent you you can't protect your child from everything and you don't know everything your child will always be in some type of harm you know it's hindsight is 2020 your child will always be in some type of harm it's gonna always be something you could do better but the second part is the arrogance of it all, is the arrogance of it all and thinking that you know somebody's heart and you really don't know. You don't know how they are, who they are. And 
thinking that, oh yeah, I do, because she thought she did know everything. And the sad thing is, Annette was really protecting her because she's like, oh, this will kill my mama. She literally took the the fall and the blame and was like, yeah, I had sex with like, you know, three or four boys. And it would be worse for it to seem like it was on her than for you to know that actually this man that you brought into the house, he's the one that got me pregnant. Like your own daughter is protecting you from that because you have this false sense of security in this idea and this trust in men. But then again, it's like, oh, well, he's a church going man. He's this and that. And the thing that about abusers that this points out and it's going, I'm going to go into much more detail later on. I keep saying that, but seriously, is that one is always somebody, you know, and two is always people, the person that people don't expect. We back and we finna talk about Mr. Boatwright's death. So at this point, they are tired, okay? There are 17 at this point. It's been going on for four years. She keep playing to Rhonda. Rhonda said, you know what? I got you. I'm gonna do something about it. What? I don't know yet, but I got, I got you. Rhoda was like, I'm something tired. Like Rhoda like, I'm tired of listening to what this man do to you. If you don't do something about it, I will. And so she tries to tell him, and this was like after the pregnancy and stuff like that. She tries to tell him that she's going to leave. And he's like, no, you're not. Because if you leave, bang, bang, pow, pow, there goes your mother. I mean, he, he's been threatening her, but he just started threatening her mother. So she calls R uh, Rhoda like scared, terrified, help me out. Well, she's not, she's more so venting. But here's the thing. And they say this a lot. You can only vent to the people that you love so much. You could only, especially somebody like Rhoda, mm -hmm. only so much venting they don't take. And it's been four years. And now you're trying to get away. You say you can't get away. She was like, Rhoda said, you're going to be able to get something. away. I got something. I'm, I'm, uh, let me spend the night. Spends the night. He ends up dead. Mm -hmm. If y'all don't know, Rhoda killed him. Yeah, Rhoda, Rhoda, Rhoda went up there and, yeah. and took him out. Go find out how he killed him, how she killed him, but we, we going to just know. He's dead. And the whole time, um, and it, the whole time I'm reading up to this part, the second time, I'm like, die. Die already. Die. Please die. Hurry up and die. Go. Bye. I'm thinking die. he might die from natural causes. I'm like, okay, when he gonna die? How he gonna die? Because this little girl keeps talking about he gonna die. She can't wait. So after he dies, they get into it because and it's like, well, I didn't want him to die. She was like, bro, you want him to stop, huh? Well, she was like, well, you told me do something. And she's like, I didn't say to kill him. She was like, well, too late. He stopped. I ain't going to lie. Annette made me so mad and it gave Stockholm Syndrome. Annette had Stockholm Syndrome bad because she was like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. girl, and you and you and you and you what? Stop. Stop. I think she was. Okay. I think she was just more so worried that it was going to come back she on her because it's like, even if we don't get caught by the law, the Lord still saw what happened. Lord. Yeah. So she, but it's too late. It's too late now. Now, this is when they started trying to make him human. And this is, my problem with this is not making people human. My problem with this is how people interpret it. I feel, and this is the problem that people have. Everybody is human. Everybody has human qualities. There are good parts and bad parts. That's what Annette was saying about him. She was like, they were all bad. It was times when Mr. Boray did this. It's times when he did that. It's times when he was so... All these nice things, right? Because people are not one dimensional. But here's the thing that I think that people need to learn, especially like this book kind of shows it, is that you can you can forgive, you can understand, and you don't have to condone. I think that's something that people struggle with. Like when you see people with serial killer documentaries and they're like showing him as a human, people are like, oh, he was this, he was that. Just like Bo right. Oh, it's so sad. Yes, it's sad he had a life. But what did Rhoda say? It's plenty of people who have been abused and didn't go around raping people. But outside of that, though, that's how I, I look at it. It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you got to see these human parts of him. I'm glad you got to understand because, yes, abuse people, hurt people, hurt people. Yes, you get these conflicting feelings when somebody does something wrong to you because it's, I punish you, I do this, but I'm also human, so I'm nice to you. You have these feelings. But at the end of the day, and something that I wanted Annette to get through her brain is that man was dead wrong. Dead wrong. Dead wrong. And I think something that the something that the murder robbed her from is that true. I guess she kind of had the anger later on, but like that true anger. 
like that feeling of being able she always was confronting him but i think that his death left her with a sense of like remorse or feeling bad for him to where she couldn't fully absorb that like he baby at the end of the day he's an abuser period end of the day he's an abuser i need you to understand this baby girl this is also the point where people start to show their behind uh-huh and i'm uh -huh. let me let while we on his desk Don't Go ahead, go ahead, because... I was not satisfied with the way that this man died. I wanted more. It was unexpected, and it just happened so quickly. And I was like, when he died, the first time I read this, when he died, I was like, no, he's not allowed to die yet. He's not allowed to die yet, because I wanted what I wanted. The first time I read this book, I was 22. I wanted this man to be exposed for the man that he was. I wanted this man to suffer the public humiliation that he deserved. But now that I'm older and now that I'm wiser, I feel like even if he had been exposed, nobody would have believed in that. Just like he said in the book, nobody would have believed her. I feel like nobody would have believed her if she had exposed him. Number one, because of the time period, this and when he dies, it's like 1968. So if y'all not taking women seriously now when they say they've been abused, I highly doubt y'all was taking them seriously back then. I was I was mad because I wanted more from this. I wanted him to suffer the way he made Annette suffer. I wanted him to have public humility. I wanted his reputation destroyed. I wanted that man completely and utterly just. And I know as a Christian man, that sounds horrible for me to say, but I wanted him to get what he deserved. I wanted him to get what he truly deserved before he died. And I, and as we go back into what Tati was saying about these people showing their behinds, that's why I'm really mad at the people in this book. Cause I'm like, y'all really showed y'all behinds. And this man left this earth like he was a saint and he wasn't, but go ahead. The death martyred him. He became a martyr. He became, I heard more good things about him after he died than before. I, his death is what really set it in stone because before his death, the only people that were really talking kind about him was her mom. Her mom was just like, oh, grateful that he was there. Oh, he did this. Like, you know, he gave, um, and he kept, I told <clears throat> Ronald this too, is he kept phrasing things as a way as if he was looking out for her. He did. So that's something too about her mom. Like, I have, mi I won't say I have mixed feelings because I know exactly how I feel about her, but a part of her and why she felt so safe with him is because he would say stuff like that, like, oh, Annette run the street. She leave before, she leave early to school and she get home late. He don't want her, really, she at the library. He knows she's not doing nothing. But he's saying that because he wants her to be home. He wants her to be home so he can have her, her to himself. But telling her mom that, it's like, oh, I don't want her running the streets. So she's thinking this is a good man. Everybody's thinking this is a good man. And when he, after he died, I... I did not think you could become more sick of somebody after death than before. But I guess that's the part of God don't like ugly. I guess that's the part of God don't like ugly because even though what they did, even though what they did, they did what they had to do. At the end of the day, now you hear more about him now than before. It's like his ghosts keep keep hunting you down. Because now all they want to do is talk about how he was a daddy to you. And I know he was a daddy to you. And I know he was a daddy. No, he was not. Uh, before I let you continue, I just want to say, I need to give Gusty I need to give Gusty May a little bit of grace. A little bit. I, I know I went in on her earlier. Like I give her a little bit of grace because um of the time period. It was the 50s. She couldn't have a bank account. She she literally had to rely on a man to help her raise Annette. Unfortunately, the man she had to rely on was trash and it's unfortunate that that was her her best option, but I do got to give her a little bit of grace. Just a little bit. And this is where we get to the part that I thought about when he first got introduced, but we never thought about after. She was like, I guess you old enough to know now. Me and me and Mr. Bowright, we were not friends. We were basically, we were practically married. We were gonna get married. Yeah, he told me when you left, we were gonna get married once you oh, once you grew up and you know you left for college. And that's what really pisses I, me off. Mouth. That's what really I pissed me in my off. Mouth. Because then she, because that's something Annette and none of us thought. Like, hold on, them being hold on. together. That's what really pissed me off because that to me confirmed Gussie May knew nothing about nothing about what went on in her house. She knew nothing. She was stupid and ignorant. But uh, continue. I know I just gave her grace. She but wasn't there. She wasn't there. But she was. She was gone. She was working ten hours a day. She was gone before before it was time for Annette to come go to school. And most of the time she was Annette was sleep by the time she got back. 
What time did she have to know about what was going on in her house? She trusted that the man who was with her every freaking night, she's like, yeah, he would come over there every night. She had no thoughts. And it was, baby, that's when I said, oh, this man literally got them wrapped around his fingers. This is freaking disgusting. Why are y'all so stupid? Why? Continue. Most abusers are the most charming people that you will ever meet. You will never, ever in your life expect for an abuser to be an abuser. I promise you. You would never expect because who they are behind closed doors and who they are around you is two different things. And you have to either be paying very close attention or you have had to go through similar things or be blessed with God with discernment to really know the difference because that's what happens most abusers and like he said who's going to believe you i'm a god fair man i go to church i sing every sunday not only that though he used to take care of that house he watched her right i'm taking in his child watching her i make sure she clothed i make sure she fed i don't just feed for her i feed for everybody i feed everybody in the community which is one time i walked limping in the snow i got one leg limping in the snow Walked all the way to wherever to go get her some snow boots. I volunteer. I do all of these things. All, all of this is what happens. And all we're seeing, which we're blessed to see, is just a net side of the story. All like, like Rhoda said, all I, all I know is what you told me. I don't know nothing else, right? But who he was in the community really unfolded after he died and really spoke to like, not just then, even now, most people who abuse people are people you would just never expect. We're going to move from there because we are wrapping up the book. When he died, the book starts going really fast. So after he dies, everybody graduate. Pee Wee oh. decides to take himself to Vietnam because he said, oh. I'm going to become a real man. I hear what y'all be saying. Y'all be calling me funny. And poor Wrong. Annette. Oh, oh yeah. Rhoda got married and to Otis. She got married to Otis, moved down to Miami and Annette. I um you know what I can't even be surprised with the the turn that Annette took because given how her life had gone up to that point I feel like good teammate and Boatwright primed her to go down that road the road she went down is just so happened the road that she went down I was not judging I I don't judge anybody especially anybody I was only one person in this book that I judge and I I, I guess I'm trying to work on that but I I, I didn't figure, but I figured. I figured. Once she got the money, got it gone, at least she left. And Rhoda was real. Rhoda said, baby, I'm not talking to you until you are out of this, <laughs> until you are out of this state. Like, Call I'm not talking to you, you until you prove okay? that you have left. So, so do little boat, right? Call himself doing a, a good deed. Like, that's supposed to erase all of the years of trauma he done inflicted on this girl. And he left her a little $10,000 check. Actually, it was a twenty thousand dollar check, but it was supposed to be split between Gussie May and Annette. So Gussie May got ten thousand, and Annette got ten thousand. Honestly, if you want me to be honest, that he thinks that's his lover. I'm not surprised he left her money. I don't think he did it out the like, oh, kindness of my heart is let me leave some money behind for my lover. That's how I. That's what I think he did. I don't think it was a. I think it was a kind, kind gesture, but I think just like how everything else. Everything else he did had like a twisted meaning behind it. I wholeheartedly believe every the way he did had a tr twisted meaning because I do believe that he loved her, but he loved her like a lover. Like he thought that was his girl. He thought that, that was his woman. He claimed her, in my opinion, he was more possessive and claimed her more than he claimed Annette's mama, Gussie May, because Gussie May was in, a, in in front of him with the judge and doing all other you know like and you didn't have no problem with that but she gets her check she moves thank god she feels stupid because she did all of that she had to do and she got her check but she moved thank you jesus hallelujah and she had a whole she had a lot better life she had a lot better life in there and then 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 yeah so let's History. let's just get to it she moved out to um, Erie, Pennsylvania, and she had a little trouble at first getting established because racism. Don't nobody want to mm -hmm. um, house her. Don't nobody want to hire her because she's a a, um, a black woman, a healthy sized black woman. And you know um, made me mad. I'm mad they called her back after she got her job. For real, I'm real mad. They called. Her 
after she got that job. Not everybody would call her getting get her this office job. But that's really how it goes. That's really how it goes. You be working, 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 trying to get you a job. As soon as you get a job, all of a sudden, here come, oh, hey, we got an opening. You know, you if you interested, where were you when I was out here struggling? So she moved out there to Erie, Pennsylvania. And um, she meets this boy from the Church of God in Christ, Levi. So do, Levi, do you see my face? She meets him. Do you see my face? Yeah. She meets him in the so this is what happened, y'all. This is this is the cool. This is like we got we gotta hurry up because we be here. <laughs> when oh, Levi, wait, hold on. Him, let me wrote, he, let me read what I wrote in my notes. I wrote Annette meets Levi, a church boy from Georgia, twice her age. Because remember, Levi had been there for a good 15 years. Now she never at this point, for the longest, she didn't go out and date with him or nothing. She just, you know, they were poor, but they lived by each other. She got her factory job. But then two things happened. Mm -mm. Pee Wee happened. Pee Wee. So Pee Wee messaged her, me, her, texted her. Pee Wee sending her letters. Florence sending her letters. She ain't really writing back Florence, of course, but she messaged Pee Wee. And Pee Wee like, girl, you better, he started threatening her, girl, you better, you better <laughs> message me back before now, I start talking let's, crap. Let, let's clarify, Pee Wee, Pee Wee didn't threaten her like uh, how Boatwright was threatening her. Pee Wee, Pee Wee was doing it in that way, like, you know, oh, friends. Friends, like, how I'm friends gonna talk around town. It. Like, yeah, he was like, I'm, I'm gonna talk about you all around town if you don't respond to my messages. So she started responding. They going back and forth a little bit. And Pee Wee come. He like, I'm about to be, I'm about to be on my side of town business and family. Pee Wee knock on her, she, somebody knock on her door. She like, who's knocking? Somebody say her name or say me. She like, who in the world? She opened the door. That's a five minute at her door. She said, who is this? What's Pee Wee real name? Jerry. Jerry. He said, Jerry he, Davis. Jerry. Jerry Davis at the door. Who is Jerry? Hey. She said, who is Jerry? <laughs> who is Eli? <laughs> she like, who is Jerry? So he's looking. <laughs> he, he was like, come on, it's Pee Wee. And so she was like, Pee Wee. Because Pee Wee didn't grow like four inches. Pee Wee, you ain't Pee Wee no more. Then got buffed up. And Pee Wee didn't, they, so they sit there chatting. Jerry feeling himself. They going to they end up going to sleep. She she put Jerry a little pallet on the couch. Like they, they did when they was home. kids. Next, yeah. Next thing you know. Annette wake up. Jerry Pee -wee. standing over her. No words they said. No words need to be said. They did what they did. And Annette gonna run to the Rhonda. Rhonda. Girl. Rhonda. Guess what? Guess who I slept with? Me and Pee Wee. Pee Wee, she was like the rest of Pee Wee, not our Pee Wee, baby. But that that was short lived. That was short lived. As, Annette, he had as soon as Annette woke up, Pee Wee Jerry gone. Jerry done left. He done ran out the house. He got what he wanted and, and dipped. And I was like, wow, Jerry, wow. But they wow. they still talked as friends. They were still messaging, still talking as friends. So it wouldn't. But yeah, that was short lived. She was like. Because even on the phone when they were talking, when she was talking to Rosa, she was like, I guess it was, you know, it's a one night stand. I guess That's it was what, what it was. But what if he overheard her say that, though? He what probably if did. he overheard her? Because she was nosy. What if he, I didn't think about that till now, but what if he overheard her say it was a one night stand and was like, oh, bet I'm getting up out of here. So she ended up getting serious with Levi. Who, baby. Baby, baby. Um, this I, is where Annette's get dating me. life pissed me off. <laughs> Jerry pissed me off. Levi pissed me off. They were together for three years. Two years? Three years? Three, three. years. Basically, she didn't met Levi mama. Huh, Levi been dating. They have a routine. He come over these nights. He misses one Saturday. One Saturday that they have lunch, have dinner together. Call his little house. Mom picks up the phone. Levi had a wedding. Levi is married. <laughs> and you know what? Levi is married. And you, and you know what? Levi you know what? Let, let's let's talk about it. Because the mama knew. She, she knew. She knew that Levi had a whole other woman. Because there is no way. And she she and she allowed that mess to happen. 
she knew that man was seeing the net and the other lady at the same time. But you he know that's by y'all. That's true to life. That's true to life. Some mamas, not my mama, but some mamas will set up and they will allow their sons to have one, two, three for a little, and they will sit right along with it and go right along with it because like, oh, my son is my son. He don't know. No, I know who my son is. You know, I can't help who he is. Yes, you can because you raised him. You're his mother. Be a mother. Yeah, that happens. Her One of her close friends dies. She commits mm-hmm. suicide because her, her husband was abusing her. Oh, uh, what's and the, she what's just the girl getting, name? I forgot uh, her name. It's it's a it's a white lady. It's a C. It's like Claire or something. It's like I'm gonna say Christy. It's something like that. But she, so she is a um, she ends up harming herself. She passes by suicide, and so and this like it was something else that happened. And this said it's time for me to go home. It, I yeah. can't do this. Mm-hmm. I got. But it was it was Levi. Home. It was Levi. It was Levi. Levi, she had to go home. At she said, this you know, point, I'm sick of this mess. I'm going back home and I'm going to stay. So she's going home. But at this point, Rhonda has all, Rhoda has also called her because baby Jocka to come back from Vietnam messed up in the brain. He, he, he goes he's down. He's suffering from um, some PTSD. Now, mind you, Otis, so we can tell this, but Otis and Rhoda live next door to a KKK like clansmen, like the head dragon. And their daughter, you know, is always over Rhoda's house. Somehow Jock gets this 15-year-old pregnant. So that's a whole she, ordeal that they're trying to figure out. I thought she was I thought she was grown by that time. Oh, she might have been grown, but I thought she was like 15, 16. But he gets her pregnant, right? But the girl ends up passing away. The girl ends up passing away. Something happened. It was a freak accident where like um, a radio ended up in her in her bathtub, <laughs> whatever. A radio ends up in her bathtub. So we go to we go back home. So everybody go back home, y'all. Oh, child, they get back home. We ready to settle down, or so we think. Everybody talking, and Rhoda comes back. But when Rhoda comes back, Scary Mary mentions something. Scary Mary mentions to Annette that uh that the little girl April then died in Rhoda's house. And that sent off some uh some warning signals for Annette. And they was like, uh-uh. No, we what you what you mean the girl died in Rhoda's house? I thought she died at her own house. We all were kind of thinking it, but we just didn't say nothing. But but Rhoda was like, nah, let me just at least ask. Let me at least ask before I get to Annette was like, so, let I me mean, just I, let me just talk to Rhoda. Let me, let me see what happened. But so we Annette all knew what happened. There. Annette get down there with Rhoda as soon as everybody go to bed. Um, Miss Rhoda, why well, I hear from Scary Mary that April died in your house? Did you kill that she girl? Said, what they got? What her dying in my house got to do with anything? She was like, you know as much as me that it got something to do with something. But here's what killed me: this girl gonna really sit there and say, "I had to do it." Girl, it's not. She said she had to do it. A nigga say you didn't drug me into something else. I didn't drag you into nothing. You, you were hey. <laughs> I kept you away from me. What do you mean? And then she like, oh, you already killed two people. Uh, Rona said four. Four. <laughs> four. We not gonna we not gonna speed past that man. What you mean four? Four. And she like, oh Lord, no, you over here killing all these people. And that's where the scene he brought up. She didn't kill the <laughs> police officers. She didn't kill grandma. She, she didn't, didn't kill, kill Granny. The the girl, but boat right. She didn't so, kill about four people. And Rona was sitting up here. Give her the Oscar. Give her the Oscar. That girl was performing for her life. But you got to know, anytime Rhoda say, yeah, my cousin, you know, my cousin in Alabama, he died like that. You know that she didn't kill somebody. You know. Freak, hack- freak accidents happen all the time. I saw on TV that, like, this man, he was drunk and he he fell down the stairs. Y'all, you know your best friend. But Annette was just so scared. She said, I have to get out this friendship. So that's what she, happened. They got out the friendship. She was like, no, really- man, that's too much. You done, you done killed four people and you and, and now I and now I know. Somehow though the Nelsons move out, move out the house house down. Mm-hmm. So we don't see the Nelsons no more. And the last where we end this book is Pee Wee is in bed with Miss Annette. And giving me hope. 
from there, I knew it was a second book. So I was just ready to go to the second book. We look a little different because, uh, listen, <laughs> we had a little break in the schedule, but we back with God still don't like ugly. Look at me. <laughs> look at me. And they're going to stop it in the middle of the scene. Like, just let the scene play out. Because God still don't like ugly. Because one thing Mary going to do, she going to give you them short chapters. I was like, who's Jerome? Who is Jerome?